Hey guys, Zito here, The Peer Dependency. Today we're going to be talking about ES6 proxies, one of my favorite features of the ECMAScript standard. In fact, I would go so far as to argue that this is one of the most powerful features of JavaScript. So we're going to look at a few examples in code. The proxy is an object that wraps other objects and intercepts operations, such as reading and writing properties, deleting properties, iterating over properties. The reason this is so powerful is it gives you an opportunity to intercept reads and writes to the proxy and determine how you want to handle it in code. Let's go ahead and take a look at the syntax of the proxy. We're going to first create an object that we can pass into the proxy. It's going to be just a plain object. We'll have a property called message and set that to the string literal hello. Next, we're going to create our constant proxy, and we're going to say new proxy because this is a constructor, and we're going to pass in the object that we want to proxy. So this is going to return a proxied version of this object. The second argument is really where we satisfy the proxy API and implement its interface. We pass an object of functions that are called traps. So what kinds of things can we intercept with traps? Well, for most operations on objects, there's a so-called internal method in the JavaScript spec that describes how it works at the lowest level. For example, you have get, which is the internal method to read a property. You have set, that's an internal method to write the property. And these methods are really only used in the spec, so we can't call them directly by name. There is a very interesting API that is used in conjunction with the proxy, the reflection API. And that does give us some means to access these internal methods. And we're going to take a look at that in a moment because it is almost always used in conjunction with the proxy. But as far as internal methods are concerned, we have a few that we can handle. We have get, which is going to trigger when we read a property. We have set, which is going to trigger when we write to a property. Let's go ahead and write these out. We also have the has trap, which is essentially the in operator. We have delete property, which is self-explanatory when we delete a property. We also have apply, which is function call. And this can be particularly useful. We have construct, which intercepts the new operator. We also have a few lower level ones, such as git prototype of, set prototype of, and these have a one-to-one -one correlation with object.get prototype of and object.set prototype of. We also have is extensible is extensible correlates again to object.isextensible. We have prevent extensions. We have define property. We have get own property descriptor and we have own keys. Now, before we go ahead and look at what these traps do, JavaScript enforces invariants, which are conditions that must be fulfilled by internal methods and traps. And most of these are for return values. For example, with the internal set method, set must return true if the value was written to that object successfully, otherwise it must return false. Uh, delete has to return the same kind of Boolean flag, whether it was deleted successfully and so on. And we're gonna see this in the examples it's important to note because the reflection API is going to come into play here to satisfy these constraints. Traps can intercept all of these operations, but they also must follow these rules. And invariants ensure correct and consistent behavior of the object, of its prototype, its this context. Even though violating an invariant may not always throw an exception, you certainly don't want to do it because you can end up in a really nasty situation and deal with some nasty bugs that may not be so obvious. So let's first take a look at the get trap. I'm going to go ahead and comment these out for the moment. The get trap is going to receive three arguments, the first of which is the target. The target is the target object or the one that was passed in as the first argument to the proxy. In this case, it's obj. We're also going to get the property. The property is the property name that is being accessed. And we'll take a look at what types of operations and code would trigger these traps. I think when we discuss these traps, we'll look at how the trap works. We'll look at when it's triggered, and then we'll talk a little bit about some use cases for it. Third, we get an argument called receiver. If the target property is a getter, then the receiver is going to be the objects that's to be used as the this property in this call. And that means it's usually the proxy object itself, or it could be an object that inherits from it if we inherit from a proxy. Right now, we don't really need this argument, but we're going to go ahead and look at it in the set trap in just a moment. So we'll go ahead and delete this. The first thing I want to do is simply log these arguments to the console to demonstrate when this trap is going to run. So the get trap is going to trigger anytime we get a property on the object. So simply writing this line is going to trigger this get trap. So let's take a look at that. 
and we see we have the target, which is our object as expected, and we have the prop name, which is message. Let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick by logging it out. Let's say proxy prop. What I'm going to do here is instead of returning, say, target prop, which is what we may expect, I'm going to just return something else. The value that we get after accessing proxy.message is the string literal something else and not hello. And I'm going to remove this and instead I'm going to return reflect.get. This is going to do the same thing we were doing before, except we are doing the proper way now and maintaining the integrity of the object and avoiding potential edge cases. This is simply going to return the property value. So now we have our set trap. Instead, it's going to receive four arguments. We're going to get the target. We're going to get the property. We're going to get the value that we're actually setting. And we get that receiver. Now set is going to be triggered when we actually set a property on this object. So if I change message to goodbye, this is going to trigger the set trap. So let's take a look at this. And I need to change this to proxy because we want to actually trigger the traps. We see we've got the target, the property name, the value that we set, and we have the receiver. Now we already violated one invariant of the proxy. We did not return a Boolean value to indicate whether we actually set the property. In fact, if we look at the proxy's value now, after setting message to point to goodbye, we see that the proxy has not changed whatsoever. And this is because we did not actually implement the setting of this object property. We're going to use reflection to set this property on this target or object. We also need to pass in the value and we'll pass in the receiver. The reason we pass in the receiver here is this is essentially like passing along the this context. If we don't do this, in fact, if we don't really use reflection at all and we instead do something like setting the property directly on the target, we could run into strange edge cases. So I highly recommend you not do that. Now, part of the proxy API for the set trap is to return that Boolean flag to satisfy that invariant. How do we know whether we actually set the property on the target successfully though? We don't really want to have to implement business logic down here to figure out whether we should return true or false. Well, if we look at the type signature of reflect.set, we see that it actually returns a Boolean value and that value indicates whether it was successful. We'll just go ahead and return the resolved value of reflect.set. And now if we go ahead and log this console, we see that we have in fact updated our proxy. Let's now look at iteration with own keys. So next we're gonna go ahead and implement own keys and see how that works for iterating over the object. Let's go ahead and add some more properties. Name Zito, channel, the peer dependency. And now we have our own keys trap. We're going to get the target. Iteration is also gonna work with get own property descriptor. Things like object.keys or the for in loop and most other methods that iterate over object properties use the internal method own property keys. And this is what is intercepted by the own keys trap to get that list of properties. There's some methods that kind of differ in how they work. Get own property names that returns non symbol keys, get own property symbols return symbol keys, object.keys or object.values returns non symbol keys or values respectively with enumerable flag set. Um, and the enumerable flag is a property flag that is set internally. We have the for in loop that loops over non symbol keys with the enumerable flag again. And it also loops over prototype keys. But for the example below, we're going to just do own keys to make the for in loop over this ob object. And we'll also go ahead and look at object.keys and object.values. Here we're going to go ahead and return object.keys target. And then we're going to implement a for in loop. We'll say prop from proxy is proxy prop. And we see that we get these keys. 
Now, what if we do something interesting here and we return a key that doesn't exist on this object? We're going to have a pretty interesting result here, and I will explain why what happens happens. So let's go ahead and add a key that does not exist whatsoever. And let's see if this property shows up when we run this for in loop over the object. And it doesn't. In fact, it doesn't exist at all. Why is that? Well, the reason is actually quite simple, but it involves that get own property internal method. Object.keys does something interesting under the hood in JavaScript. It returns only properties that have the enumerable flag set. So to check for that, it calls the internal method get own property for every property to get its descriptor. And if there's no property, the descriptor is empty and no enumerable flag is there. Ergo, it is skipped. So for object.keys to return a property, we need it to either exist in the object with the enumerable flag, or we can intercept calls to get own property, which the trap for that is get own property descriptor, and we can return a descriptor with enumerable set to true. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So we're going to do get own property descriptor. We're going to get the target and the prop. And we're going to return an object where we say enumerable is true. And we also want to set configurable to true. And we see now that we do get the does not exist property key from own keys. And of course, it doesn't actually exist on this object, so we get undefined. In fact, we can say if prop equals do not exist, we want to return some value that doesn't actually exist either. But now it will. And we see we get some value. This is why I love proxies. If you've been using JavaScript for a while, you'll know that there used to be a convention. I don't see this as often anymore, especially with the advent of actual private class members that have been implemented in ESNext. If you prefixed a key with an underscore, that usually meant that this was a protected property or an internal property that shouldn't be deleted. So let's say we call this internal don't delete. Obviously, we really can delete this property. Say we just run delete proxy.internal, and then we look at the proxy. We see that we did delete this internal key. What if we wanted to leverage the proxy to prevent this from happening? We could do so by implementing the delete property trap. We'll take the target and the prop. And we're going to say that if the prop starts with an underscore, which is our qualifier for an internal property, we'll throw an error. No. Otherwise, we will actually delete the property from the object. And then we're going to satisfy that proxy invariant by returning true and we see we have our exception to follow along with the correct way of implementing things here we should use reflection and we're going to pass that target and prop and we also get the boolean once again we'll said do this say we want this property to truly be internal, we would also need to throw an exception when reading such a property. We'll want to throw an exception when something has attempted to set that property. We would also want own keys to exclude those internal properties from the for in loop in methods such as object.keys. So next we're going to take a look at the has trap. And to illustrate the has trap, I would like to show you a use case for it, implementing an in range function. So if you're familiar with Python and some other languages, there are these range functions whereby you can create a range and simply iterate over that range. You cannot do this natively in JavaScript. However, we can implement such a thing using a proxy. So I'm going to create a new proxy for this. I'm going to first declare my range. And I'm going to say that this range starts at 1, it ends at 10, and set this new proxy, pass in my range, and I'm going to implement the has trap. 
we're going to get the target and the property return whether prop is greater than or equal to the start of the range as well as property being less than or equal to the end of this range and here we can quite literally say five in range which is true 15 in range is false pretty nice now for one of my favorite traps and perhaps one of the most useful traps the apply trap and the apply trap handles when the proxy is called as a function the arguments are going to look slightly different here. We're going to receive the target, the target object. And as you know, a function is an object in JavaScript. So in this case, it could be the function. We'll get the this arg. We'll get the args, which is going to be the list of arguments. Go ahead and return reflect apply the target, the this argument, and the arguments themselves. I'm going to move this to a second proxy. And we'll take two arguments, x and y, and this will be quite simple. We'll just return x plus y, going to log these the console. Now let's go ahead and invoke fn. If I go ahead and call apply, and say I pass in the this context, we get the this arc. And that, my friends, is how you use ES6 proxies. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for next time. We're going to do a part two follow-up to this video where we will build our own subscribable object using proxies to kind of get an idea of what a real use case might look like. We'll see you then.